As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. There's no crying in baseball! I ate his liver with some fava beans. I skinned. If I can change, and you can change, everybody can change! And welcome to another episode of Your Next Favorite Movie. I'm your host, Josh G. And today I am once again joined by some returning guests. They are the hosts of the podcast that wouldn't die. Please welcome Kevin. How's it going? And Aaron. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last time you guys were on, we obviously talked about Rosemary's Baby, and I, I remember laughing way more than I should about a movie like that, <laughs> just because talking with you guys. That That is still <laughs> one of the top movies. That is such a great movie. So why don't you guys take a minute and tell everybody what they can expect when they tune in to the podcast that wouldn't die. Hijinks, shenanigans. <laughs> we discuss science fiction and horror movies with a comedic twist, we hope. That's the goal. So, no promises. There's some twisting. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I definitely, I would say you guys achieved that. So, <laughs> that. I was just recently listening to your Critters episode. So, I know it had me laughing. So, there you go. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you believe I never saw that before? <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, I was. I thought it was funny you were thinking that DiCaprio was in that one. I was like, no, he's. The, it's the third one he comes in. That's where he makes his appearance at. Damn Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> and was that a straight to video? I would Good think grief. so, but I don't know. I, I'm the, not sure. I mean. I believe that the first two are theatrical, and then and after that, it's anybody's guess. Yeah, I was like, I, I don't even, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Little baby definitely... Leo used to be in a bunch of things. He, he like would pop in uh, for like TV movies. Well, he was on Growing Pains. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I don't remember seeing yeah. it, but I remember reading about that. So I, I was too sophisticated to be watching that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely before Who's Eating Gilbert Grape. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. Which was yeah, probably yeah. the first time I saw him. That, yep, that Gilbert Grape was the first time I ever saw him. I don't remember anyway. That and This Boy's Life with De Niro was a great movie. I love that. I, don't, I never saw that. This is early DiCaprio. Absolutely. Wasn't he on like Roseanne or something? Was he? Hey, I, 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 I don't know. She's just know. throwing stuff out there. <laughs> You're just making it up as you go along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we're not talking about Critters DiCaprio. You can definitely go check out their episode on that and hear all about the first Critters anyway and <laughs> DiCaprio, how he may or may not have been in it. But tonight... <laughs> We're going back. Oh, is this 40 years this year? Like, is this the official? Like, it was 80. No, it was 82. It was 82. It was 41 years. It's 1982. We're going to talk about Halloween 3, season of he the He was. Week. Boom, boom, boom. What are you so booming? There. I'm booming that I just Googled, and he, he, he had some friend of Darlene's or something. He did, he did make a brief appearance on Roseanne. Like oh, one episode, or what are you talking about? He was not a reoccurring character, as far as I can tell. I closed the okay. phone. <laughs> he was in the background of one scene. It didn't matter. <laughs> he, was he, he, was, he was little tiny baby Leo. That's a good Leo, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. You don't really know much about Halloween witchcraft. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red. Halloween, the dead might be looking in. Stop it! The world's going to change tonight, Doctor. Happy Halloween. Halloween 3, season of the witch, the night no one comes home. Rated R, now playing at a theater near you. So... I guess we'll start with when did you guys first see this? Aaron, you go. What you got? I first saw it when Kevin forced me to watch it for the podcast. 
I had never seen that. I saw the original Halloween, maybe Halloween 2, maybe H2O, but somehow I never saw 3. And now it's kind of like beer. You know, when I was in college, I didn't really like beer, but it was free. So it's an acquired taste. And now that Kevin has made me watch Halloween 3 season of The Witch 1000 times, I'm like, it's not not too bad. I was just watching it today. I was like, hey. It's a fun romp. It's a fun romp. Absolutely. I, I saw it, you know, not in the theater. Absolutely not. I remember my, I don't remember, some kind of family cocktail party at, you know, a family friend's house and the kids were in the back Wait room watching. There was a, an adult family cocktail party. Something and like that. With, with Halloween a holiday. 3 playing in the background. It, it, like, you know, the kids would go off and do their own thing. So that it was like the, you know, the playroom or whatever, the, you know, the billiards. I don't know. What play that was. sounds like the shittiest and cocktail they had the TV party on. I'd ever heard of. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> Any cocktail party where they fire up Season of the Witch, that top drawer. Any cocktail party where you're bringing your goddamn kids to it. Well, you can't get it. Too. Come on. Weren't you a latchkey okay. child? Some people like spending time with their children. I don't know. <laughs> Who's to say? Over a uh, martini? <laughs> over a martini? Absolutely. So there was the scene where, and it was funny, is one of the robots, I swear, I keep calling them robots. They were like basically androids or whatever. I, I was convinced it was Bob Euchre for 25 years. I'm like, oh, Bob Euchre's in this movie. What a, what a bizarre coincidence. There's a scene where he kills the... Um, what is she? She's the coroner or whatever with the with the power drill, yeah. Yeah. and it, and it scarred me. You don't see anything, but just right. the idea of it. You know, young, you know, impressionable Kevin, eight years old, was scarred and hooked. I was hooked ever since. I, I would huh. say I would not like to be uh, drilled in the head with a power drill. That that not sounds terrible. Help that, that's right. a good assessment. Yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Not real high on your list. Right. No, I mean, there's a lot of ways to go. That is not on the top of the list. But I, I remember watching this. I have a friend who's a, like a nurse practitioner. So I called her up. I was like, can you kill someone by doing the Larry Fine eye jabs? She's like, ah, you probably do a lot of damage. I don't know if you die. I mean, so you put a lot of a behind you. I don't right. know. I mean, I I guess the idea is your fingers are only going to go down so far. But if you're the android, if you're super strong, that's just, you know, you can get in there and kind of root around. It was like Beetlejuice where the fingers were coming out the backside. You don't know that. (laughs) You don't know. I know. Okay. Uh, Well, I think for anyone that's listening that maybe isn't familiar with particularly the season of the witch, because it requires them more than the rest. Maybe we should talk about what is Season of the Witch about? Because it's not like all the other Halloween films. It's, obviously, Halloween fans know this, but just you're case. right. It's Halloween it's, without Michael Myers. Yeah, Michael Myers is not in this one, strangely enough. What is there a briefly, face, <laughs> He's there briefly you, on the TV. There's a commercial for the original <laughs> Halloween right. on TV when I Tom like Atkins... That. When Tom Atkins is visiting the bar for the 15th time during the course of the movie by himself, he's watching commercials. How you do? He's watching like Saturday morning cartoons, which is it's a good time to drink heavy drinking <laughs> while you're watching your Saturday morning cartoons. There was a commercial for Michael Myers for uh, for the original Halloween starring Jamie Lee Curtis. So there he makes a brief cameo. How do I describe the plot? It is off the wall. It is it is bonkers. It is an Irish immigrant who has a factory where they make novelties is trying to take over the world or and, and sacrifice America's children through cursed Halloween masks. Something along not those cursed. lines. I think it's like it's technology. Device. It's technology. Techno- you're absolutely right. The snakes and the worms are all inside the disc. A lot of crickets. A lot, a lot of, cr- of crickets. I thought crickets were and, good luck. And, 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 and Stonehenge is involved in how they, they stole yeah. Stonehenge. <laughs> he stole one of the, the hinges, <laughs> smuggled it in as one does, and is using that to make microchips that will, 
you know, cause uh, America's children's heads to explode and snakes and crickets to crawl out. And he employs an army of, of lifelike uh, robots to do this as well. So, hmm. oh, and, and I'm going to go on a side tangent because Please. it's you two. A, another movie that incorporates Stonehenge. And Kevin, you remember this one that I implored you guys to review and you finally got to. One of my favorites, Troll 2. Also, Stonehenge. <laughs> And, and then, of course, there was, oh, my God, I, I just blanked out of the name of the movie. What's the, it goes to 11. Oh, you're talking about Final Tap. Final, this Final, is Final Tap. Tap. Yes. Also, there's a brief appearance with Stonehenge there. Not horror. The Stonehenge, Stonehenge Cinematic Universe. Yes. <laughs> you better believe it. No question. Powerful. Powerful. No, no I mean, Troll 2 is on a whole nother level. As you know, it's, it is, do know. it is, <laughs> there's, oh my God, there's, uh, the bizarre corn, uh, issue in the, in the back of the camper. I don't know what was, I can't even describe it. It is so off the wall. Oh, it was I, saw some kind of I, corn. I saw that as a kid and I legitimately for a little bit thought that was how you made popcorn. Because I went, I saw it really young. And I was like, "Oh, that's a weird way to make popcorn." But okay, so that whole year, and then away it goes. Throw that's... throw an ear of corn into a camper, and you come back later. It's full of popcorn. <laughs> that's exactly how we do. No yeah. question. <laughs> oh, but yeah, back to Halloween three and why Please. you guys love this. So this one, this one in particular, so much. Well, what's funny is because we were on the show before, Aaron picked Rosemary's Baby, which I enjoy. Obviously, a classic. Do you see that? That that was very pandering. He enjoys it. I enjoy <laughs> you, you should say, I love it too. I also enjoy it. It's just <laughs> you can't do different. it. <laughs> okay. okay, I like it. I like it a lot. It's different, though, obviously. This is a different vibe. This is kind of the different, you know, uh, perception and, and feelings about films between the two of us. This is the kind of movie where you sit down and you're like, what am I watching? This is kind of a Troll 2 kind of quality of the film. Oh, it's no. This fly. is much higher level than Troll 2. You must be crazy. You, okay. I mean, one's a Hollywood There's production. Fighting words. One is fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> exactly I could, people will cut you for that but this is it is so bizarre that you just have to lay back and just let it wash over you because the plot is so all over the place it is so all over the place that you can't have i mean it's not scary i mean let's just let throw that out there immediately it's not scary but it is so strange and peculiar you wonder like what kind of psychopathic mind even came up with this plot Right. Why do they make the dad a doctor? That's what I can't figure out. Because he's acting like he's a, a out of work oil field worker. I mean, why does, what does he that always mean? have like? A, well, <laughs> I am in the oil town. He always has like a six pack of the Miller High Life, and he's sliding in like he's Burt Reynolds. Uh, he reminds me of like what was one of the Grindhouse movies we saw with the crazy doctor, the one with the lead. Oh, uh, Planet one? Terror. I think it was like he looked reminded me of the doctor from like Planet Terror. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll tell like, you what, what the hell. The two two things that Dr. Daniel Chalice loves more than anything else. <laughs> Miller High Life. <laughs> exactly. He's a high life man. <laughs> Boozing and chasing strange uh, skirts around town. No question. Things he doesn't like doing, practicing medicine or spending time with his <laughs> with family. His children, yeah. At, yeah. at all. No. At all? No. At all? <laughs> no. I, I, it's like I got I got stuff I have to do. I'm being called in. No, not for doctor duties. He's going to like you said, chase down chase down something that has nothing to do with him in reality. <laughs> for he okay, look. The, at no time in this movie does anybody say maybe we should call the authorities. No, no you know he's, he's like got I it. got this. I'll take off a couple days from work. <laughs> And I, I'm changing. I, I mean, I'm taking my an children again, and I will <laughs> the, crack the case. Exactly. It's it's Halloween. I will not be there for them nope. on that day. Instead, I will go off with some 18 year old I just met, grab a <laughs> six pack for the road, and just let things go where they go. So, so let's ask this: What 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 is Doctor Challenge doing around Christmas time every year? Because I'm sure he's finding <laughs> a way out. <laughs> 
<laughs> no question. Oh, another absolutely. crisis. Another crisis. Is he the and he gets called actually gets called in? Is he the only doctor in this town? And then he pieces out. He literally yes. came in to see a guy who had fainted. <laughs> that was the emergency that, that he got called in for. Yes. I hope I mean, he's not the only doctor. <laughs> I mean, all the, the countless lives that are lost when he doesn't show up. And frankly, when he or does when he show the, up, half the, in the, the bag. shaky shakes from uh, I, I didn't get my high life at breakfast. <laughs> The shaky shakes. The shaky shakes. There you go. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right, Good so times. This, this is what yeah. You know, this is what I like. To, I want to talk about the Halloween franchise as a whole and your thoughts yes. on that and how this relates into that and not into that at all. Well, let me start by saying uh, the first Halloween is a total classic. I mean, unimpeachable. It set the the, the tone. Terrifying. For, for all the slasher movies you saw through the 80s, I mean, are basically the bastard children of the original Halloween. I mean, they're all uh, striving to reach that level. Halloween 2 is pretty good. Not nearly as good, but much more kind of of, of the type of like your Friday the 13th, which I enjoy, and those other kind of films. H- Halloween 3, the only reason they, they did this thing is, is John Carpenter's like, I have no interest in doing, you know, making, you know, sequel after sequel, telling the same story, I've done it. So if you want me involved, let's just make this an anthology series and we'll mix it up. Now, I don't know why he settled on this particular script. I mean, that's, is this the one you want your name on, Johnny? I mean, maybe uh, take a second pass on that script. Uh, No, I'm okay with that. I (laughs) want to know what would have been the next one if he had free, free range. We're, we're, well, I promise you we're getting there. I, 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 but that's a question I have. And the other question I have is if this was the second one, could we just have had a different Halloween movie every year? And we didn't have the second Halloween, which kind of what is what ruined this one. If there weren't two of them. Would everybody have been clamoring for Michael Myers the way they were? I think, I think the issue is that you had the first Halloween with Michael Myers and that was supposed to be, you know, Dr. Loomis looks over the balcony, the body's gone. That was supposed to be it. And that was supposed to be, I mean, what a way to end it. The reason why they, they made number two is because the Friday the 13th movies had become so successful. So they There's were trying money to, on the floor. You got to pick it up. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. But again, John Carpenter didn't want to keep making these movies. But when and three, uh, shockingly enough, did not do as well. <laughs> as the previous movies, then they immediately went back to Michael Myers. And I think four was pretty good. Four was good. I wouldn't say immediately. I mean, it did take about six years before they got that. They were like, okay, now we know what we're going to do. (laughs) You're absolutely right. Yes. Not, not immediately. (laughs) They had to, they had to think about it for a few years. Uh, But in my opinion, four is good. Five is a train wreck. Six is an amazing train wreck. (laughs) That's the one with Paul Rudd. Oh, I remember. I'm just, he's just lucky Clueless <laughs> also came out that year. <laughs> yes. He'd be working at the Gap if it wasn't for Clueless. Coming out. <laughs> and then it's, in my opinion, they're all kind of, you know, I, I, I was less interested after six, frankly. Oh, killing oh, me. Here it You're killing me. You're killing me. You're Lay it on me. What you got? Oh, look, I, I did the ranking a year or two ago. So I, I've got my list out there. And yes, I. People vote against me all the time, but I got H2O at the top. But it's also the first time I ever saw a slasher in a theater. So I just have a, so I was, I was 12 when that movie came out. So it just hit me at the perfect time. So H2O is my baby. Like the top, 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 top. <laughs> top, top. <laughs> hey, the problem. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a hot take now. And that's not coming from somebody who loves Halloween three. Well, it, um, it has a special memory for him. And that's, so that's okay. what pushes him up. Absolutely. No question. Um, the, the biggest issue with the Halloween series, in my opinion, is all that cult of thorn crap. All that stuff. Mm. You know, you lose me. That's why four is, is so good and gets the- diluted by five and six coming after it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the one we did where we thought he was going to have sex with his daughter? What, what, that, was what was that? that was and six. That was six. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. Yes. There was. Yes. There's some kind of weird incest thing going on in six. 
That's well, good. Michael ain't right. Maybe he's like a Habsburg or something, but there's some inbreeding something going on there. <laughs> uh, well, and John Carpenter said what he liked about Michael Myers is it wasn't supposed to be the, a reason for why he was the way he was. Right. That's what he thought made it scary. Yeah. And he's right. I don't know why. All this cult of thorn crap where it's <laughs> like, it's off the rails. Good. I mean, and also, I know this is, we're not here to talk about all this stuff, but initially Michael Myers was not related to, uh, to Lori, to Jamie Lee Curtis. She it's was just, just a decision. random, right. I prefer it, it that By way. the second one, they're like, oh, by the way, you guys are secretly brother and sister. It's like a mm -hmm. soap opera. Like I'm watching Days of Our Days, Lives. Or Days something. of Our Lives. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kevin, you think I'm controversial? I, I had Halloween two at number nine on my list because I, it pisses me off that they did that. It does. Absolutely. Well, and that's what's interesting about the new ones, which, you know, you could take them or leave them depending on your opinion. Um, they ignore all of the movies after the first one. Just for that reason. Hey, exactly. Which is why I, I was going to get your take on the new trilogy and how you feel about that. I saw okay. the, the first new one. It was all oh. fine. It, it still wasn't as good as the first one. I saw the first new one. Didn't care for it. I never saw any of the other ones. Yeah. What? Boom. I know people oh. who love them too. Who really, who really loved the first one and thought the second one, eh, and I know the third one people hated. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The first nope. time I saw it, I hated it because I was expecting Michael just like everyone else. So, and I don't know anything about it. I don't know. I don't know. Is it, is it a silver shamrock situation? So Spoiler alert. that I think I, don't, I was I was actually wanting to discuss that way. I thought you would have seen him. So that <laughs> uh, I, I, no, there is there is Michael in this one, but it's I, I don't want to ruin it for. I think you should. Okay. I'm him, surprised Kevin hasn't seen him. He seems every, whatever piece of crap floats out there. You know, I am shocked that you haven't seen all the new ones. I mean, I'm about to go see Cocaine Bear. Frankly, so anything's any, I'm up for anything at this stage. Of the Why game. wouldn't you see Cocaine Bear? Absolutely, we need to get that on the podcast. Well, you know what? I, I want to see that. And side note, I was in Build a Bear today, and I went, man, that's a brilliant idea. Why do they not have Cocaine Bear? It would be <laughs> that's, number that's one the bear. <laughs> that would be like fentanyl bear, wouldn't it? At the mall. <laughs> Do you see them making that movie Meth Gator? Or yes! something? I think it's like a. I did not see that. Yeah, I want them to battle cocaine bear and meth gator to the death. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it, what's funny, I read up cocaine bear is based. They say it's based on a true story. Really, what happened is a bear found cocaine, ate it and promptly dropped dead. Right. And they made up That's... what they think would have happened had the bear stayed alive. Yes. I, yes. I based on a story. true story. V very loosely based. One percent based. There was yes. a bear and there was some cocaine. Cocaine involved. And that's all you need. <laughs> that's all you need. That's all I need. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about what would you have wanted to see if they had done another Halloween? I don't know how to, I don't want to say another <laughs> Halloween three, but if they had gotten to do the... There's no way to come up with this, but if they had done a sequel either to this or just went into an anthology like the plan was and did another one. I think what they should have done is go full Irish where you incorporate the Silver Shamrock and Leprechaun and unleash them together in this small town. Absolutely. Maybe so, there's I, a Banshee too or something. Let's, let's so, just add more Irish. Well, we don't know if he dies in the, the evil, I guess, the witch. Who's the titular witch? The Irish guy? He gets zapped, but we don't see him melt or explode or anything. He may still be out there. He's already killed, what, half of America's youth because Tom Atkins wasn't able to get a hold of, I don't know, CBS, whoever he was trying to reach on the phone, turn it off, turn it off. Well, um, we know how that story is. He goes to run Oscorp. <laughs> <laughs> I think out of the ashes, when, when the main wizard, leprechaun, or witch uh, it turns to powder, you just see the little little leprechaun crawl out of the ash. 
<laughs> and do a little dance. <laughs> do, a little do a little, little jig. dance and open shine up some the shoes. Factory. <laughs> shine <laughs> some damn shoes. <laughs> all you gotta do to get away from, him, just throw some shoes at him. He gets distracted. <laughs> I have to say, we've watched <laughs> two of those movies, and, and they suck. They are the worst movies. They're not. Uh, I mean, which, you, which two have back. you seen? I saw the original, and it, well, that that movie does not suck. Oh, that does it, not it, suck. It, it. I have to say, every time we've done, we've done two of them on our show, we did that one, and we did Leprechaun in Space. That one sucks. That one's gone. And that whenever it's like, the hood. We, I've seen actually, I did enjoy Leprechaun in the Hood. <laughs> I did, I'm not I gonna lie about that, that one. Um, <laughs> but it's like you know, you buy it or you can rent it for $3.99 on Amazon Prime or whatever it is, but it's always like, or just buy it for $4.99, take it off our hands. I, um, <laughs> I have the seven, I have the original, at least the seven movie collection on Blu ray. I, I love oh, some Leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> that's a commitment, man. I hope you could at least write that off on your tag. Hey, look, look, <laughs> let me just make this suggestion. Go with Leprechaun Please. in Vegas, part three. It's just called Leprechaun three, but it's Leprechaun in Vegas. That, that's, okay. that's the one. That's the one. I'm that's so the out winner. of the loop. I'm out of the loop. I hope he runs up to Donald Trump at Trump Tower. Is that part of it? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not part of it. That's there, the there are casinos involved. <laughs> there you oh go. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, Ice T is in Leprechaun in the Hood. So there you go. It's an uh, arcade. Why haven't we reviewed that? Because I've never seen that. Maybe we need to. There you go. And they made yeah. it back to the hood. So they have they have a direct sequel to that one. And you get magical flutes involved. <laughs> I always love they add some random tidbit uh, to the mythology with each movie. <laughs> we never mentioned flute in any of the other movies, but now here it is. His only weakness is special power. Yes. <laughs> They found the special book of Irishness. So each each time they add one more they do. holy relic. They but do really, make you, that would three, be perfect. Two. <laughs> and the leprechaun hates children. So there you go. It all works out. He takes over. Well, what if what's her name from Halloween three is back? Like, we don't know what happened to her. Maybe she's scarred from the fire and she's pissed off that Tom Atkins left her behind. There you go. Now she's a witch. She's practicing <laughs> witchcraft, and she's back. Oh, she's Leprechaun's bride. He's come come to collect his bride. Okay, so you you have a new. That's Leprechaun too, where he finds his bride. So there's your <laughs> matchup right there. It all comes. It all ties. Together. It all circles around, just uh, not in space. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll stay away. We'll stay out of space. All right. So the next part, and like I said, I've told you off mike i'm curious to see where you're going to go with this and that of course is the dreaded remake and how you guys would do halloween 3 season of the witch now first who you put in it but also would you leave off the halloween title in general and just call it season of the witch or something else i mean that's that's a good question i i do kind of like the idea of every halloween or every other halloween the next series in the anthology I think that would be kind of cool. Now, granted, it all depends, you know, if the quality is there or <laughs> not the quality, you know, this this level of quality. I'll take this, this uh, kind of uh, bonkers off the wall stuff. My thing is, I, you know, modern version of Season of the Witch came out. My Tom Atkins, Dr. Daniel Child, I looked for kind of a skeezy older guy Maybe in his late fifties with a handlebar mustache. It's hard, hard to find nowadays. People have like a like Tom Selleck mustache anymore. <laughs> um, but you know, I said, you know, who's guy who likes his drinking, likes the ladies, maybe Don't tears up the hotel room. Don't you take my pick? <laughs> my <laughs> my guy is Russell Crowe. Oh, Russell Crowe is Doctor Dan Chalice, oh. kind of. Good looking guy in his day, a little little past his peak, right? We're going unhinged Russell Crowe look from unhinged. Yeah, that has look? to be unhinged Russell Crowe. Because <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Absolutely. To play uh, his love interest in this movie, I wanted somebody who's far too young for him. <laughs> no question. That's really the only thing that's necessary is she has to be far too young. And I, I chose Margaret Qualley 
uh, from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right Once now? Upon a Time in Hollywood. Pussycat. Absolutely. That's Pussycat. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she I, Lately, she was on a Netflix show called, oh man, Made. She was on Made, where it's like yeah. she's a single mom. Yeah. She's, okay. she's very, she's Andy McDowell's daughter. I don't know if I, oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Well, I didn't know that either. Yes. So she's, <laughs> and they were in um, The Nice Guys together. Interest, so it's kind of a reunion. So there you go. I need to rewatch The Nice Guys because I didn't know who she was when I first saw The Nice Guys. So I didn't even think about it. But okay. Right. She's she's the daughter in that movie who they're like trying to track down. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, okay. Yes. Wow. She has, I mean, she she has a larger, large ish size role in that as well. To play <laughs> to play the guy who runs the factory, the silver shamrock factory. I chose Brian Cox from Succession. And he has he's done a ton of stuff. He was in Braveheart a hundred yes. years ago. Uh, he was in like the, the Bourne movies. Of course, he's the an original English actor. Lecter. The, from Manhunter. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> he, can, he can absolutely do. And it's got to be kind of a quasi-offensive Irish accent. That's what I'm looking for. Speaking as, <laughs> as a, a vaguely Irish American myself, <laughs> it's got to be that level. Kind of like if Chris Pratt does an offensive Italian accent when he's doing Super Mario Brothers. That's what I'm looking for. I want people to be kind of bothered by it. Uh, but I think that's I think that's a good combination. Um, other than that, I think you do the script as written. I want yeah. a shot-by-shot shot remake, kind of like what Gus Van Zandt did in the 90s with Psycho. Shot for shot. <laughs> so why, why mess with brilliance is what I'm saying. <laughs> Because that never works. I, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I haven't seen that work yet. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. What you got? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> At first, I was going to go with uh, Sizemore, but then I thought, no. We're going Makana Hey. I wondered if that was a hint when you did the all right, all right, all right. But I was like, Absolutely. What I <laughs> Dr. Don't Daniel? you think he's too good looking? He's too good looking. I mean, you understand why the chicks are running off with Michael, um, with Matthew McConaughey. It's like, I want a guy who's like, why are the chicks kind of, I mean, maybe him, 30 give, years ago. He give him his a, look a, from a good, True Detective. Hot shower he's not, and scrubbing. Give him that look from True Detective, and he's not quite that ultra good looking McConaughey we, we know, know and love. Yeah, he's long <laughs> in the tooth. He's, he's long he in the tooth. Uh, I threw down uh, Emma Stone because I want her to be a little sassier because I love Emma Stone. I think she's Emma Stone's good. good. I like that. Picture. She is good. And Cochran, we got to go with the walking. Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I saw him in a movie where he's doing a horribly offensive Irish accent. It's called Wild, Wild Mountain Time. I believe it was with uh, Emma Blunt and um, oh damn the dude from uh, Fifty Fifty Shades of Grey. What's the dude? Christian oh, Grey, the Irish believe... dude, the Irish yes. dude from the fall. Yes. So he's doing his real accent. Emma Blunt is, is she's doing a, a good Irish accent. She's at least English. She's at least English. <laughs> Christopher Walken. It's like what were they thinking? But whatever it is, I'm in. <laughs> I haven't even heard. Lo love me some walking. I almost yeah. went Malkovich, but I pulled back. I said, no, walking. I love Malkovich, but he won't do the accent. So they just have an American cocker. I don't think that works. Well, I I'm not sure how much accent walking's doing either. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. His his normal speaking voice is not even yes. uh, any recognizable country or language. So. <laughs> It's true. It is his own. It's walking ease, I guess. It's his own thing. It's walking ease. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's really the bizarre pauses at inappropriate times. Like, why is there a comma in the sentence? Why? Why is it a hyphen? What's happening? No one knows. It's a mystery. No one knows. And then there was this it. weird character called Rafferty, who's the gas station. I thought Kevin could actually play that character. No. That been oh. <laughs> I'm in. Hey, go. well, you gotta understand, he's the one who allows uh, Tom Atkins to come in and watch the TV show and make the call. Yeah, to all the... <laughs> we we haven't even talked about the fact that in this movie and in the, in the climax where he's trying to call the stations, because remember, Colonel Cochran's plan is to have all the kids watch the the special giveaway 
at 9 p.m. after the showing of Halloween. This is America. There are four different time zones. So which 9 p.m. are we referring to? That's true. Okay. That's true. And does he know? That's, that's does he know all the presidents of all the networks? He just, <laughs> dee, 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 just, call... dee, dee, dee. just keep right. call, going down calling? the list. Calling the the emperor of TV. Who are you calling? <laughs> to get to the a... Oh, crazy drug doctor. Sure, whatever you want. Let me throw We're that switch. down right now. We're well, I'm, I'm gonna well, throw I'm gonna throw this at you guys because you may know better than me, but. I always hear people talk about watching stuff in this time frame, 82 or whatever. And it's, we had four channels. So around the whole country, are they the same four channels? Like, or well, is you it had only network. affecting this area? No, you had network. You had the network, even back in the olden days, you had network, but you also had local TV. So right. either way, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and, and the issue is it was after the the showing of halloween so it was only on one network right i mean was every channel showing it was halloween every channel well apparently it was three channels because he got two of them shut down and it ends with him abc him nbc cbs okay. what happens they flip to pbs i mean <laughs> is there something going on there as well i mean the spanish the channel are, there was kids channel 12. are not watching pbs on halloween at that's 9 like p.m. We got to think it's also 9 p.m. 9 p.m. It's like McNeil Lair or some, some documentary about the Kaiser. <laughs> it's the McLaughlin group. I it's believe the it was McLaughlin on the McLaughlin group. So the real message the is get watching. your kids to bed early on Halloween. Don't even let them watch TV at 9 p.m. or later. Or trouble. I lock the door do. and I blow out the pumpkin at 9 <laughs> o'clock. Y'all need to be going home now. No question. And who are these kids just wandering the streets at a shady old gas station? At nine o'clock, <laughs> trick or treat. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> where I parents. went for the best candy. It was the gas station. They they might was... give out. Maybe they gave out full size bars. They had them right there in stock. That's oh well, true. then I'm going to the gas station. No <laughs> question. If that's what they're offering, I will be there for that. They're in a crazy rinky dink town that probably has. A, this is the Quickie Mart. So uh, there's probably like a crazy little local grocery store that closed at seven thirty. So that's it. That's it. Okay. Oh, all right. Aaron, you also said you had something to do back in the 70s. You didn't get around to that one. So let's the see where this goes. The retro season of the rich, <laughs> season of the rich, season of the witch <laughs> is, of course, going to be Sally Fields and Burt Reynolds. Oh. And it won't be Ooh. a band. It'll it's be a Trans Am. <laughs> it'll be a Trans Am. And it'll be like Boss Hog will be <laughs> the, uh, the Boss Irish. Hog. Boss Hog will be the, the, the Irishman. <laughs> Maybe we can get him to wear the white suit. I don't. I, I cut something about Dan Chalst where I like it, where it's like he's clearly like I don't know, fifty five, fifty eight, something along those lines. I mean, he's not, it's not, no offense, he's not a lady killer per se, right? What do you want, Susan Day from the Partridge Family and Burt Reynolds? <laughs> that looks like that's NC seventeen. Come on, no, I don't. I want Susan Day and Dom Delaney's. Is what I'm looking for. (laughs) What I'm looking for from this. Uh, That's what I'm going to be dreaming about tonight. Thank God. I was going to have a beer while we recorded, but now I'm not because then that would for sure be cemented into my uh, subconscious. I don't need to see these. Well, look, here's the thing. You still see Atkins popping up now. Let's just bring him back in it now and still put him with someone like Margaret Qualley, who's still that young. <laughs> just you know what? That is absolutely the way to do it. No question. <laughs> I think we've got it. By George, we've got it. <laughs> or, or you do it as one of those things, everyone's a Muppet but one, and it's just Tom Atkins because you can't replace Tom Atkins. <laughs> Everyone's a Muppet. So, so when he gets into bed at the seedy motels, Miss Piggy, is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> Where you see the the unmotivated that's, that, that's our story. ass of Tom Atkins. <laughs> we can't sacrifice the story. That's the story. <laughs> the visual Absolutely. assault of Tom Atkins' ass. Uh... <laughs> hey, I love Tom Atkins. Neither creeps, dynamite, dynamite. For real, Tell me. I went, I went through a phase where I answered the phone, thrill me, and people are like, wait, what? what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Excuse me? 
it sounds like a cool thing to say until the first time you try it and people are yeah. like what the record skips and people are like what <laughs> yeah yeah no tom exactly. atkins is great no question um but this oh man watch this movie through the lens of tom atkins is a total lech and he's a raging alcoholic and you will see the signs throughout the entire movie <laughs> We're literally where he's like sexually harassing the nurse, right? He clearly had something going on with the medical examiner at some point. I mean, he's getting in the car to go on their trip to Santa Mira, and he's got a six pack. <laughs> as yeah, you it's like as you as what that's what's the funniest thing. Back in the day, you'd say, Hey, I'll just have one for the road. One for the road. People were like, Let me just pound one before I get behind the wheel of a car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because it's so important for me to drink your free alcohol instead of the alcohol I paid for at home. (laughs) I like to think that as he's driving his station wagon or whatever the hell it was, that after he chugged his beer, he crushed it on the the outside of the car and then just pitched it in the street. That's my dream. No question. (laughs) It makes sense he's a doctor because you see back in 80s movies and the one I'm going to go to is the one I remember the most and that's Bloodsport. Dude's been beat up, got a concussion and what's the first thing he's doing? He's drinking a beer in the hospital bed and I'm like, is that that what happens? Maybe. That's where Dr. This is medicinal. Yeah, back in the 80s you could just go to the the commissary at the hospital and get a six pack. A pack of Luckies. (laughs) Filterless. uh, Yeah. Some filter. It's a scotch by beer. (laughs) Smoking by the oxygen tanks in the hospital. Yeah, I can see that happening in the 80s. (laughs) <laughs> they would absolutely you're you're going in there to have your like baby delivered and the doctors lighten up just give me i'll be in in a minute give me a second i like <laughs> to think there's like this long ash on his cigarette while he's performing the surgery <laughs> like christmas vacation <laughs> it is <laughs> there, there was a absolutely. special nurse just for that nurse ashtray please ashtray <laughs> <laughs> like a spatula she's trying to catch the ash so it doesn't fall into the it's true <laughs> like me absolutely oh, no question good old days oh yeah <laughs> so i i think you guys have done a good job i'm gonna give you guys one more chance to to sell this movie to someone on why they should watch halloween 3 and why they should stop with the halloween 3 is a bad movie for the most part we've come around on this movie i think as a whole but there are still those people. And in case they're listening, sell them on why they should give this one another chance. Well, I mean, do you have joy in your heart? It's what I think you start with, right? It's like, look, we stipulate. I've said it before. I'll say it again. This say Shakespeare. Robert Frost did not write the first draft of this script. Okay. We accept that. But it's a damn good time. It's such a fun movie. You know what I mean? It's like. Tom Atkins doing his thing, right? Shacking up with, I swear to God, check her ID. Is she 18? <laughs> Same question. Right? Did he pick her up it, at the roller boogie place? I, they give her, they, <laughs> you go by the eye test back there. It's just an eye test. You, we, don't, we don't need credentials. It's an eye test. Well, and the other thing about that actress is she was the underage girl that Woody Allen was seeing in the 70s in real life. Can you say that again? Yeah, repeat that. That the actress mm-hmm. in this movie was the underage girl that Woody Allen was seeing in real life in the 70s. Oh. What? Oh, I didn't realize that. Boom, bombshell. Yes. Absolutely. Cuz th- he did that movie uh Manhattan. Yes. With uh, Mario Hemingway, I believe was was the was the actress. I thought he was and- going to, uh, dating her. <laughs> no, but it it was based upon his real life experience. And what's funny is Woody Allen could make that movie in the 70s and nobody bats an eye about him dating like a 16. Oh, yeah, she has homework. Right. I never thought of dating a girl who was still had homework. And like, that's like a joke. And I was like, oh, Woody. So no wonder <laughs> she had. feels totally comfortable with uh, Mr. Atkins. Did they go on to get married after this? <laughs> Maybe. I like my man. Permission. 40 years older than me. Yeah, yeah, they didn't <laughs> For openers. Absolutely. No, it, Woody I mean, Allen. That's somebody it, who I used to really enjoy. And then it was like unclean. Right? No question. It's mm. it's a bizarre situation. So needless to say, that led into this movie. 
yeah. her, her, her cinematic choices. Uh, but Kevin, it's, this it's a, is like PBS. The more you right? know. Yeah. Thank you. That's, thank you. That's for NBC, educating. though. That's NBC's thing. The more you oh. know with their little <laughs> rainbow. Dun, 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 thing. Dun, dun, dun. I'm adding it all. I'm mixing right. it all up. <laughs> It's just a damn good time, is all I'm trying to say. Now, Aaron did not like this when we first watched it, but it grew on you. Am I right, Aaron? And maybe she's the perfect one to sell it, because there we go. Yes. That's what we're trying for. I'm telling you, kids, the, the way this works is you have to watch this at least four times. Not all at <laughs> once, but it's like beer. Nobody likes beer the first time, but you just keep doing it. And then after a while, you're like, kind of like this besides who wouldn't like six more days to halloween 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 six more days to halloween silver shamrock try to get that out of your head good luck <laughs> you're marked like the cult of thorn there's like no escape the cult now of thorn. i think this is really how they got to america's children with that little jingle just hearing it it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like the ring but instead of watching the tape you listen to a jingle and six days later you're still alive just Boom. that little twist <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean and, and tom atkins in this movie is basically james bond and let's be honest, he breaks into the factory with ease, right? They've got him chained up while the evil, like, uh, Connell Cochran tells him his whole damn plan. It he is. Escapes, right? He foils, he, he foils the plan by turning on the machines that cause all the microchips to go off in such a way that the robots can't undo it. <laughs> They're like, oh, damn, he's figured us out. Is he a hacker as well? <laughs> Who's to say? He's a master. He's a master. No, Mr. Atkins, I expect you to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he figured it out just by throwing things on the ground. He's a wizard. He's a wizard. <laughs> there we go. He's oh. the witch. He's the that, witch. I still think that this may be my favorite cell jobs, like Cell Halloween 3. Want to see the movie that stars the woman that Woody Allen was sleeping with underage? That's it. This is the that, one. That's the tag. <laughs> that's the tag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that that's the way to sell this movie. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right. You two, I think now I want to go watch it again because I totally go. forgot what she looks like. God damn it. Hey, I don't know anything else that she was in personally. I'm sure she was in stuff, but I don't know anything. What did she do uh, first? She did, uh, it was Alan. I guess first, Woody Allen. She, she did Woody Allen. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Well, I'm surprised she wasn't in his movies because he always put uh, these ladies in his films. Right. Well, what was it? It was, you know, Diane Keaton and later Mia Farrow. I mean, they were established actresses who were of appropriate age, one might argue. Uh, whereas <laughs> his underage beauties, don't turn the camera on. That's evidence. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he had some small thing of dignity that he's like, well, I can't go that far. I can tell what I'm doing, but I can't use the actual actress that I'm doing it with. And everyone That's where he draws the I'm line. Doing. That's his line ah. in the sand. Yeah. <laughs> Good grief. Uh, all right, you guys, let's go wrap this one up. Why don't you tell everyone, well, what's going up? Because as we're recording, your new episode will be dropping in a mere few hours from now. Something That's like that. Cool, I know. Right? Well, and this will be like, out next week. This will be out next week, so you can promote whatever that episode is. Sweet. Oh, sweet. All sorts of good stuff. Um, well, currently, we got Critters. Next week, we've got uh, House, the 1986 classic with the uh, greatest American hero and George Went. Billy Cat. So, <laughs> and Bull from Night Court. That's, that's and... my favorite part. That's my favorite part. That it's got night. I call it got Night Court. We had a security guard at where I worked one time. We he looked like him. We just called him Night Court. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but it's it's basically like your Thursday night lineup. They took like the stars from all, like, hey, you want to be in a movie? You're usually doing TV. And then after that, we've got the American version of The Ring with Naomi Watts, uh, with the guy from Virgin River. Uh, Virgin River. 
Thank I, God. His Thank name God. is Martin Henderson, and he was an ex oh. this year. Oh, yeah, that's right. I knew yes. when I watched X, I recognized him, and I never yes. did look it up to see Is it him, from but... watching Virgin River? Is that what you remembered him from? I, I, no, because I when he said Virgin River, I was still drawing a blank. He had to say X for <laughs> it to click with me who it it's was. It's like a Hallmark <laughs> series, but, but it's on Netflix. not a Hallmark. It, it, it's a, a Netflix version of a Hallmark series. Yeah, my wife yeah. loves it. That's how I know it. Yes. Uh, so we got it's that all coming out. Menopausal women programming. <laughs> I won't tell my wife you said that about her, but there you go. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, so we got that coming up as well, and that's a lot of fun too. So good times. Hey, tell everybody where they can find you on social media, where the podcast is, all that good stuff. We're the podcast that wouldn't die. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram. We're all over the place. Everywhere. Goodness gracious. We're not um, on Snapchat. We're not. <laughs> we're not on OnlyFans. <laughs> we're not on chat roulette. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Just add that. I will not add that. <laughs> um, but we, we are going to start. We are going to start recording our episodes on YouTube as oh. well. So if you've been dying to see what we look like, you have that opportunity to be disappointed. good times times. Aaron you want to add anything before we wrap it up (laughs) (laughs) dramatic a dramatic pause yeah come check us out Uh, my brother now has joined all forms of media so I don't have to hold up weird pictures of him and say hey this is my brother we do a podcast (laughs) So little Kevin now is also on the ticker talker and the Insta. He's real, real now. It's real. Okay. The easiest way to get a hold of this show, linktr.ee slash YNF movie pod. It'll have social media, YouTube channel, my personal letterbox. So you can see what I'm watching. That's not being covered on the pod. And I don't know what's coming next on here. So until next time. <laughs> We'll see you then, because I have no idea right now. (laughs) Peace in the Middle East. Like Daniel Chalice. He didn't know what was coming for him either. (laughs) That's it. Talk to you next time, guys.